Hey guys, welcome to another video. Recently, I took a look at this Intel Apollo Lake passively cooled computer, and I also did a video uh, about installing Linux on it. Now, in the first video, I mentioned that we'd be discussing overclocking this little machine and basically enabling a little bit more performance. So it's not going to be overclocking in the traditional sense, like you can do with an Intel K CPU. Um, but it's more of about raising a limit that's been well, placed on the hardware or software. Well, I guess we, we can confirm that it's a software or BIOS limit. And we're basically going to unlock that limit so that it can do that permanently. Now, as with any alterations or overclocking, etc., there's always a little bit of risk involved. But in this case, uh, it works out quite well. It should be compatible with uh, all uh, Apollo Lake machines. And at the end of the video, I'll sh share a little tip on how you can enable some extra cooling and to do this 24 seven. So let's get right to it. Starting off, we're in the default mode. Uh, I have to tell you, every time you reboot, you will have to reapply this uh, overriding setting, I guess. So here I am opening uh, HW Info 64. It's a little tool which can show, show me the information I need to see. So if you see here, our power is limited to 10 watts and we have an eight second or so boost time. So let me open ADA 64. And I'm going to stress the CPU, FPU and GPU at the same time to show you what limits uh, we currently have with the stock settings. I open the sensor so we can see uh, how much wattage the package is using and how much is going to the EA course, that's the CPU part, and the GT course, that's the GPU part. As you can see, we boost up to 15 watt for the total package. But after a few seconds, it goes down to about 10 watts. And it stays there. So if we look at our power meter, we also see that it's drawing about 10 watts from the wall. And uh, if we were looking during the start of the benchmark, we would have seen a spike to 15 watt and then dropping down, just like we see in the software. Okay, well, that's gonna stay there. So let's see if we edit the values, what happens then? To edit the values, I created this batch file and I'll explain in more detail at the end of the video and I'll have it in the description also. But basically this uh, batch file sends a, a command to overwrite a certain setting within memory. Okay, now that that's done, let's open H HW info again and see what changed. So now we see power unlimited, time unlimited. So basically we've unlocked the limits that were in place by default. Okay, let's open the sensors again and our stress test tool. And let's stress it again like we did before. Oh wait, I have to scroll down to the uh, wattage display. As you can see, we're drawing 15 watts again. But the interesting part is it doesn't drop down anymore. Still at 15 watts. As you can see, it's staying at 15 watts and not dropping down. So I'm going to leave this running for a while to see what it does with the temperatures for this uh, Miele PCG35 APO. Since it's passively cooled, at some point it should reach a thermal uh, threshold where it doesn't become warmer anymore. But as you'll see in the end, it's going to take uh, quite a while. And uh, I'm speeding up the video here, so we reach that point sooner. And as I said, we'll be discussing a, a cooling tip after this. 
So overclocking or unlocking or whatever you want to call it, uh, Intel Apollo Lake is a bit different than normal overclocking because as I mentioned before, you have the IA cores and the GT cores. And if you're using the IA and the GT cores at the same time, you're going to be seeing a pretty big improvement because we're going from continuously 10 watt to 15 watt. So that's a 50% improvement. But sadly on single workloads, so only CPU or only GPU, you're only going to see a marginal difference because those are limited by themselves also. It's the combined use that sees a big boost. So, as you can see, after about 18 minutes, we're, we can see that we're still at 15 watts, but our CPU EA cores have risen to about 88 watt, uh, Celsius. So that's becoming a bit hot. So let me show you what solution I have in mind to cooling this without having to do any soldering or any other kind of work. So, I don't have one of these cables handy, but basically we want to go from USB 5 volts to a generic fan connector and powering a fan, a 12 volt fan, because they're normally 12 volt, with 5 volts, so it starts turning slowly, but enough to move some air, and it can all be done using USB power. So let me uh, stick this on there and uh, connect it together. So again, this is uh, all components I had uh, lying around. I'll have links in the description to a cable which goes directly from USB to uh, either a, a 12 centimeter fan, which fits perfectly over the Miele, or a uh, normal three and four pin fan connector. So you can use any fan you have lying around as long as it spins up a little bit using five volt. Okay, as you can see, I have the fan hooked up and it's moving air from the bottom to the top. So it's blowing air away from the unit. But you can experiment with what works best for you. And with a nice grill on top of the fan and maybe some zip ties, you can actually secure it and have it as a nice neat little package. Okay, let's uh, watch for a while and see what that does with the temperatures. Again, I accelerated the video a little bit, but as you can see, temperatures are starting to drop and we've just dropped below 80 degrees. And if it continues for a while, it, it should reach about 75 degrees or something like that. Perfectly acceptable for these cores. Their max temperature is about 105 degrees. And there you have it. That's how you unlock extra power from your Apollo Lake powered machine. As I mentioned, keep watch of the temperatures, overclocking or unlocking or whatever you want to call it, isn't without its risks. They're low, but as long as you keep a little watchful eye into temperatures and, and do some stress testing to make sure that you don't reach the limits of the cooling with your normal use, you should be fine. I gamed on the machine and, and everything like that, overclocked or unlocked or whatever. So again, uh, as I mentioned, I'll have links in the description to uh, cables with which you can easily connect a fan or a USB header for fans, etc. And uh, I hope you found this video useful. Give the like, maybe subscribe for future content, and uh, I'll see you guys then. Bye-bye.